Hello, it's Sarah, and I decided to come back for the next part of the video and have some base coating left to do because I wanted to show you something. I'm going to undercoat the bowl with green as well. I just painted the um, gingerbread and I'm just going to take that green and do the whole bowl. You'll be able to see the um, the tracing but I want to show you how when you undercoat red with green man it just pops so I just wanted to show you that um, so see I'm just gonna put this right here and go all the way around his little face yeah I, I and there were a couple other things I was like when you come up against a color, I wanted to just share, like, if you go on top of that color, the other color, you can use a Q-tip to take it off right away. Like, as long as it's still wet, you don't have to worry. Um, but there were a couple little things that I could share, just so that you know. Um, Matt, I'm going to be ready in one sec. Um, so anyway, I want to show you this... Uh, And I also kind of see, I only did one coat of the blue so far because I can tell that this is a little, I moved my tripod closer so hopefully I'm, um, my head isn't getting in the shot. But see, I don't have to be careful, I keep forgetting. Because this is just undercoating, but when I do my red, oh man, you won't believe it. She doesn't have you undercoating the red in this um, particular pattern but she's done it before and that's kind of where I got the idea to do it and f I figured since I'm using the jade green for his little pajamas and the um, bowl is right next to it I was just going to pull that all through this is going to be slate gray and the book and the apron are um, so I'm going to let that dry I didn't go all the way up against this little hand I'm going to just do that. And I'll be right back and I'll show you how I undercoat that red or oh, top coat it. I'll be right back. All right, now that I've got two coats everywhere, at least two coats, it's looking opaque. I'm going to do another transfer of the design onto here. I'm going to line everything up and I'm going to add on the, some of the, I'm going to put the leaves on. I'm going to put some of the more detail-y lines on. Uh, I can't add the, um, but I'm going to add the, the stars, the word, so, and some of the, the details on the hat. So I'm going to line each thing up separately type thing. Um, because it's on a wood piece that's not exactly the same size as the pattern but I'm gonna put and I'm not pushing hard I want to keep these lines under like they're not supposed to show so you just want to keep them light I'm not pushing hard but I want them on here as guidelines um, what else this little this is actually just for shading let me put very lightly and I'm gonna put this leaf and the berries and the bottom of the leaf um, I want to line up Oops, I want to put this little line under his head just because it makes it when I'm floating I can just follow that line and it makes it much easier for me I'm gonna line up I can't really put this on yet because I haven't undercoated the red hopefully I'm in the shot okay I know it's far away but I just want you to get the gist of Um, I'm going to do 
the um, icing. The icing has a little shade line there that I'm going to grab and do that right here. And there's the details on this little cookie cutter I'm going to put on because it makes it more dimensional. There's a side and the little handle. I think I can see around my snow, um, my gingerbread enough that I can do the undercoating, but I'm going to do the books. I'm going to line them up as best I can because they're a little bit of a different size then. But I just want to put And I could write this in my own writing. It doesn't have to be, this looks like it's really um, just, you know, basic p um, printing. It's not like a f fancy font or anything. So it could be however. And I'm going to do the stars like this because then I make them much more like straight. All right, so. I have those on, but now I can see where I'm going to do the red. I think I'll use the little bit smaller brush because um, there are some littler, skinnier parts. Same thing, water, and then I'm pulling the puddle. I'm making a little bit slicker, wetter puddle, that's all. And that's crazy because you can tell I didn't put green right there and you can totally tell. So I'm going to try and get snugged up against this um, icing as best I can because it looked a little bit sketchy. Um, when I did the green. Now I don't want to go on top of the little guy's um, pajamas. So I'm just going to stay. But see how bright the red is? And sometimes when you paint with red, uh, you have to do a lot of coats to get it to cover. This color that she uses too is a beautiful color. It's called um, country red. There's so many versions of red, but this one specifically, it's so beautiful. I've been getting my nails done and I was thinking of going red this time, but I think I'll have one more appointment before Christmas. So I think I'll go red for Christmas. So I went with this like pinkish. I'm just trying to see those lines. I can see it well enough. Anywho, um, it's just really glittery, but man, some of the nail polish colors of red when I watch people getting their nails done in red are so gorge. But I'm so fair. I never, I generally don't, like I don't wear red lipstick. I don't have very full lips though, so I just think it looks clownish on me. Um, anywho. Red is such a strong color. But for some reason, the pigment doesn't always translate initially with the first coat. It doesn't come up as bright as it does when you, now see there's a, a ridge there. So I'm just take my nail, I mean my finger, and just push it toward the color to just get the ridge off. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Yay, okay. Yeah, so this is a little um, bit more painstaking. Painstaking, is that the way? But I'm gonna get it under here and then I'm pushing down to get all that paint squished out of the bristles. And then I can work it up to the edge. 
work my ridges out so therapeutic I tend to paint in the quiet a lot too I don't even put the TV on a lot of times I do that so um, hopefully I'm, I'm giving you guys some good pointers I don't know what that dark mark is there I have a feeling I could just scratch it off almost I'll do it when it's dry and I'm just gonna take the chisel edge of my brush and go up against the book if it's if the paint is nice and wet I will be able to just slide the brush right along and create a nice straight line but see how it covers and then I have to come over here and go around the icing again I went on it so you take a q-tip this is one thing I didn't show you if you go on it you can just pull away from in the direction away from but I can fix that too with um, by coming back with uh, the white color again and really shaping the icing the way I want um, but you, you should take it off while it's still wet that's the best chance you have for uh, removing it and let's see I'll go up against the side a little very sloppy But if the paint's wet, it should move, and you'll be able to get a nice line, um, crisp line is what I'm trying to say. I'm so focused on what I'm doing, I can't even talk sometimes, right? Oh, Lord, this is a little tricky right here. I can't really see where it was. I'm getting more water on my brush. There was just not enough water. It wouldn't move. Because I want to stick it in his armpit and pull it up. And I went right on the icing. But it is just icing, so you can. I will fix that. probably needs another coat like especially down there I did it a little thin because I was over the like near the book see I don't know what see it came off but like right here on the white I just don't like that I'm gonna come in with my round brush this is a for some reason this round brush can kind of flatten out um, it almost becomes a flat you see that and I can get a hook in there I'm just changing the shape a little bit making it a little more round all right you guys so I'm gonna go make dinner because um, you know what I'm gonna do while I have green on my palette too is I want to base these uh, these berries I'm gonna undercoat them too with green there's three little berries here and then when I put the red on those they'll pop um, but once I'm done I'm gonna do one more coat of the red and I'm gonna come back and put on any other details like I'll just put this line under here and I'm gonna add our little uh, rolling pin and base coat that as well so when I come back, I'll be ready to uh, float the highlighting and the shading. I'm going to base coat my um, holly berry, the holly leaves as well. Um, so everything will be base coated and we'll be ready to put our details on.
All right, so I will be back.